welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about how to decide whether to start a blog or a YouTube channel. Now I love reading the comments on my YouTube videos. You guys are so smart and have so many great ideas and I love, you know, interacting with you guys. It was something that I didn't really think about before I started my channel as a benefit that was going to happen, but it's one of my favorite parts now and I spend hours every single week just talking to you guys in the comments. Anyway, whenever I make a video about blogging or about creating a YouTube channel or growing your YouTube channel or anything like that, I always see so many of you comment and say that you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or you're thinking about starting a blog. And when I've kind of gotten to know some of you a little bit better and we've continued this conversation, I've heard from you that you're interested in starting either one of these things or maybe both of them, but you're not quite sure which one is the right fit for you. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down some of the pros and the cons of each of them, pros and cons of a blog, pros and cons of starting a YouTube channel, uh, and also suggest some questions that you might want to consider asking yourself before you jump into one or the other to help you figure out which one might be the best fit for you. Okay, so to start out, I'm going to focus on talking about a blog and specifically the pros of starting a blog. Now, you'll probably notice that both a blog and a YouTube channel have a lot of pros in common. There are positive benefits of both of them that they both share, but then they also each have some unique pros that the other one doesn't have. Okay, so the first pro of starting a blog is that it allows you to share your ideas with the world. Obviously, this is a pro that both a blog and a YouTube channel have. They both are outlets for your creative ideas, whether you choose to use them to teach people things or you just are creating some sort of entertaining resource for people to consume. Either way, it allows you to share your creative ideas with the world. The second pro of starting a blog is that it is pretty flexible, fun, and easy. Now, I know that most bloggers would probably tell you that running a blog isn't that easy, but on the relative scale of things that you can do, yes, it is hard work, but it's not terribly complicated. So something that pretty much anyone can do, it is a very flexible way to share your ideas with the world and potentially make some money. And it also can be really fun because most of the time people start a blog around a topic that they're really interested in. Okay, the next pro of a blog is that you can monetize it with ads. So you can potentially make some money by putting advertisements on your website. You also, this is another pro, you can use your blog to advertise and sell your products or services. So if you have a widget you want to sell or if you want to make a course or if you offer some sort of service, like if you are a web designer or a video editor or a personal assistant, whatever you do, whatever value you want to give to the world, you could choose to use your blog to actually advertise that service and get customers. The next pro of running a blog is that it's something that you completely own. While you are to some degree normally relying on some third party services who might be hosting your content, okay, so your content might kind of be living somewhere else, you do technically own your content, it is yours, and for the most part, you are completely in control of it. And that's something that's a little bit different than a YouTube channel, and I'll get into that a little bit later when I'm talking about the pros and the cons of the YouTube channel. And then the final pro of a blog is the most obvious one, and that is that it's a great choice if you love to write because you can share your creative ideas with the world through writing. Okay, now let's get into the cons of running a blog because there are definitely a few of them. The first one is almost in contradiction to one of the pros that I mentioned, and that's about the ads. While you can put ads on your blog and you can earn money from them, the ads on blogs pay very poorly. In fact, you need to have hundreds of thousands of page views per month in order to make any sort of significant amount of money. And even that significant amount of money honestly probably won't be more more than a couple thousand dollars at most. However, that's not to say that you can't make a lot of money with a blog. There are many opportunities to work with sponsors or to sell your own products on the site that can allow you to turn it into a profitable hobby or even your full-time job. The second pro of running a blog is that you really have to do all the work to generate your own traffic. People might happen to find you on Google and that certainly happens sometimes, but not nearly as much as it used to happen about 10 or 15 years ago. And even that organic traffic is often often earned through your hard work. 
The next con of running a blog is that it is extremely competitive. There are millions of blogs on the internet these days, and so it can be really hard to get your website to stand out, to get people to even hear about it, and if they do hear about it, to get them to visit and to get them to come back for more. Okay, but we're not done with the cons yet. Like I said, there are a few of them. The next con is that it doesn't necessarily create a very personal connection with the visitors to the site. So someone might happen to find you on Google, they come across your site, maybe they want to see a recipe or a fashion post that you put together or your review of some sort of gadget. They read the post, they get the information they need, and then they're out of there. They might never even think about the fact that a real person wrote that article, that you might have other articles that they might be interested in reading, that they might be interested in your life. You know, you have so much more to share with them, but it can be tough to get them to understand and realize that when they just come and read one of your posts. More often than not, they just leave after after they read that post and they never return again. And then the final con of running a blog is that it can be very time consuming. Well, at first you might think that it would not take very much time to run a blog because you might think, okay, so this article is, you know, a thousand words long or so. I could probably write that in an hour. I want to blog once a week, an hour a week. That's hardly anything. And I completely agree. That is hardly anything. But the reality is as someone who has blogged pretty consistently for the last five years or so, that when you're first starting out, you have to invest a whole lot more time than that simply in learning how to do all the different things related to running a blog. When I was starting my blog, I was spending about 20 hours a week on my blog, about five hours of that every single week was going into writing the posts because sure, it only takes about an hour to actually write the post, but then it takes several more hours to edit the post, to find or create images to go along with the post, to put that blog post on your blog, format it how you want, test it, make sure everything's running right. There's a lot of steps involved and that's not even including then promoting the post. When you're first starting out learning how to do all of those different steps and learning the different softwares that you need to actually build the site, to hook up your email list, all those different things is very time consuming. But even once you get out of that initial learning phase, the work does not stop because at that point your eyes are opened to all of the potential opportunities out there, ways that you could collaborate with other bloggers, new software that you could learn, ways that you could promote your blog even more, ways you could make your blog posts even better. And you start to feel like you need to do all of these things if you really want your blog to be successful. And since you already have to put several hours a week in just to make the posts really awesome, you feel like you should invest more time into it to make that initial work pay off. So long story short, running a blog is very time consuming. Now, if you just want a little place on the internet to chronicle some of your adventures or to share some kind of diary entries, then you certainly could do that in just a couple hours a week, no problem. But if you're planning on turning this into a serious hobby, into monetizing it, or into turning it into a full-time job, then I just wanna let you know that honestly, you should plan for it to take at least 15 to 20 hours every week. Okay, so now that we've covered some of the pros and the cons of starting a blog, let's talk about the pros and the cons of starting a YouTube channel. And like I mentioned before, a YouTube channel has a lot of pros and cons that are similar to the pros and cons of starting a blog, but also some that are different. Just like starting a blog, running a YouTube channel can be really flexible, fun, and pretty easy. Again, it does take time, it does take some hard work, but it's not terribly complex. You can, of course, get more into the filmmaking and videography side of YouTube, and in that case, it definitely gets a lot more complex and I would say stops being so easy. But for most people, running a YouTube channel is pretty flexible, fun, and easy, and it can be a flexible, fun, and easy way to make a living if that's what you want it to be. The second pro of running a YouTube channel is what I'd like to frame as location, location, location. So whenever you have something that you want to sell, whether it's a house, that you've bought that you're trying to sell or if you have a business and you're trying to sell a product, if you have a good location, it is a huge asset to your business and it makes it much more likely that your business will be successful. Just imagine if you have a hamburger chain and it's on some quiet back road as opposed to if you had a hamburger chain and it was located on a busy street corner. 
okay which one is probably going to do better it will be a lot easier for the one in the good location to do better because it gets so much traffic and the same thing happens with a YouTube channel unlike a blog that is lost on some back road of the internet your YouTube channel is on a platform that is very busy with people okay there's a lot of traffic here on YouTube people browsing around just looking for something to watch and YouTube is constantly suggesting YouTube channels to people who they think might be interested in them so a definite pro of a YouTube channel is that you're in a place that already gets a lot of traffic and so you can potentially get a lot of easy visibility and you don't have to constantly be working for your traffic. The next pro of running a YouTube channel goes right along with that and that is that running a YouTube channel can be a pretty fast way to build your audience. Now there's obviously all sorts of different platforms on the internet and off where people are trying to build up their platform and attract an audience. Whether you're running a podcast or a blog or a Facebook page or an Instagram page, whatever it is, you're trying to get visible and build your audience. You're trying to have people find out about you and decide to follow you and learn more about what you have to offer. And a pro of building a YouTube channel is that it can be one of the fastest ways to build your audience because not only do you get that traffic, but people will also feel much more connected to you when they see your face and hear your voice. And that brings us right along to the next pro of starting a YouTube channel, and that is that it can be a great way to build connection and trust with your audience. Whether or not you already have a blog or you're already trying to build your audience on Instagram or any other platform, there is no denying that when people see your face and hear your voice, they feel much more strongly connected to you. They cannot deny the fact that you are a real person who has your own unique personality and unique ideas that you bring to the table, and they are much more likely to want to find out more about you and more about what you have to offer. The next pro of starting a YouTube channel is actually in direct opposition to one of the cons of a blog. One of the cons I mentioned of a blog is that the ads pay pretty poorly, but the ads on YouTube actually pay pretty well. Now, most YouTube channels earn about five to ten dollars per thousand views that they get on their YouTube channel. So if you have a video that gets a hundred thousand views, you probably made around five hundred dollars. Now I know that at first you might think, well that doesn't sound like that much and I probably won't be getting a hundred thousand views on my videos, especially when I'm first starting out. And that is totally true. However, as you build up videos on your channel, you're gonna build up this whole library of content and people are gonna keep watching your old videos. Ever since my channel got to the point where I had maybe about 50,000 subscribers and I started having some different videos take off, my channel has averaged at least around half a million views per month across my whole channel. And then depending on what niche you're actually in, you might earn more or less per thousand views that you get. In my particular niche where I'm making videos about entrepreneurship, success, and personal development, I make an average of about $10 per thousand views that I get. So that 500,000 views across my channel that I get every month earns me around $5,000 per month. Now considering that I don't have a massive audience, it's pretty cool that I can make $5,000 a month just from the ads alone. Okay, and then the final pro of a YouTube channel is one that a blog has also, and that's just that you can also use your YouTube channel to sell your products or your services. So again, if you have a widget that you want to sell, or you've created a course, or you provide some sort of service yourself, whether that means you're a bookkeeper or a graphic designer or any other sort of service provider, you can use your channel to show off your expertise and get clients. Okay, now let's talk about the cons of a YouTube channel because there's definitely a few of those also. The first con is that creating YouTube videos can definitely be time consuming. I'd say that on average, people spend anywhere from about one hour up to about 10 hours to make a single YouTube video. However, I wanna let you know that if you're making videos more like this one where you're sitting down and talking to a camera, that normally takes me around two hours if I'm doing the editing myself. So sitting down and actually filming the video takes about half an hour and then 
I spend about an hour editing the video and then another half hour creating the thumbnail and actually posting it on YouTube. You certainly can spend way more time than that if you want to make it into more of a production, but if you are making videos more like this type, then I think that you'll find that it actually takes you less time to make a YouTube video than it does to write a blog post. When I was consistently writing blog posts, I would normally block out most of a day to get that blog post written and posted on my site, normally around five to six hours. However, I can make a YouTube video in around two hours. However, the fact still is that creating videos is still time consuming and I would still consider that a con of running a YouTube channel. Okay, the second con of running a YouTube channel is that YouTube is very competitive. It is not as competitive as the blogging world. There are millions of blogs and I believe that there are about a tenth the number of YouTube channels as there are the number of blogs. However, both of these things are rather difficult to count and I've seen different numbers for both the number of blogs and the number of YouTube channels, so I can't say for sure. But most of the time, the numbers that I've seen for blogs have been about 10 times as many blogs as the number of YouTube channels. All that to say, blogging seems to be more competitive, but YouTube is still very competitive and you still have to work on doing a good job on YouTube, making good quality videos, making them super interesting, that's probably the most important part, and also sharing valuable content, whether that's helpful how-to content or simply really entertaining content. But long story short, YouTube is competitive and that is a con of running a YouTube channel. Okay, and now the final con of running a YouTube channel, and probably the biggest one, especially in contrast to a blog, is that you don't completely own it. Now, I believe that from a technical standpoint, you do own your videos that you put on YouTube. YouTube can't just go out and use your videos for some other purpose. No one else is supposed to be able to take your videos and go out and use them for some other purpose, but you are putting them on someone else's platform. And so YouTube is completely in control of your videos on their platform. Now, hopefully you are keeping master copies of your videos that you'll be able to use for other purposes if you so choose, and you are always welcome to use them for other purposes. I don't know if you realize this or if most people realize this, but you can take the same videos that you put on YouTube and you can go and post them on Facebook, for example, and there's no problem with that. But whatever videos you put on YouTube, you don't have control of that, and you certainly don't have control of your whole channel or of the subscribers that you attract on YouTube. And what that means is that there is always that potential that something could happen to your YouTube channel. YouTube could delete it, whether that be on purpose or completely on accident, and I know people who that has happened to, um, or YouTube could decide that they don't like your content and could choose to ban you from YouTube. Now, those things are certainly rare, but they are a con that you should consider. Simply put, you don't own your YouTube channel. Okay, so now that we've gotten through the lists of pros and cons of vlogging and YouTube, I'm now gonna do a little bit of kind of comparison and contrast of the two platforms, and then I'm gonna share with you a few questions that you might wanna ask yourself to help make this decision. So, blogging versus YouTube. They're both amazing platforms where you can share your creativity and impact people's lives and start to build up your audience. They also both are fairly time-consuming and fairly competitive. They also both allow you to create an income for yourself, both through ads and through selling your own products or other people's products. And then let's talk about some of the ways that they're different. Well, long story short, YouTube is a little bit less competitive than blogging is. Now, that's not to say that it's not competitive. It definitely is very competitive, but it's less competitive than blogging. And when someone does find your YouTube channel, it's more likely that they'll actually choose to subscribe and watch more of your videos in the future because they're gonna feel a stronger connection with you. After working as a consultant with numerous bloggers and numerous YouTube channels, I would say that on average, YouTubers are able to build build their audience about 10 times as fast as bloggers are. And that is a big difference, especially when you consider all of the hours that you're having to put into creating the content for either platform. You really want to be able to get the biggest impact from that effort that you're putting out. So basically, I would say that if you're comfortable on camera or if you're willing to work to become comfortable on camera, I'd probably recommend starting a YouTube channel over starting a blog. However, if you're someone who loves writing and that is what really appeals to you, then that's really the most important thing. And in that case, start a blog. 
And the only other thing that I want to mention is that as I brought up earlier, if you start a YouTube channel, you're not going to be in complete control of it. And there is always the possibility that you could lose all that hard work you put into building it. But you certainly can mitigate that risk by working to diversify your audience as much as possible and to create multiple points of contact with your audience. And all I mean by that is that if you are running a YouTube channel, I would highly encourage you to ask your subscribers to also follow you on Instagram or most importantly, to join your email list. The more points of connection you have with your audience, the more secure your business is going to be. Okay, so finally, let's get into some of these questions that you can ask yourself to make this important decision. Now, first of all, probably the biggest question you can ask yourself is just, which one would you enjoy more? Because the hardest part about running either of these two things, either a blog or a YouTube channel, is simply sticking with it. So many people start a blog or start a YouTube channel, write a few articles, film a few videos, and then they just lose their steam and they quit. And once you quit, it's really hard to get going again, and it's also really difficult difficult to build your audience if you aren't being consistent. And if you're not doing what you are the most excited about doing, it'll be even harder to stick with it. So if you enjoy writing more or if you enjoy making videos more, then you'll probably just want to go with whichever thing you enjoy more. And the one exception to that that I would make is that if both of them sound interesting to you, if you're open to both ideas, then you'll probably want to go with which one makes the more sense for your goals. And that brings us right into the second question, which is which platform would be better for your goals? And in order to answer that question, you first have to get clear about what your goals even are. So different people have different reasons why they might want to start a blog or start a YouTube channel. Maybe you just want to share your ideas and almost use it like a digital diary, a digital public diary. Other people really want to have a big impact on a large number of people. Still other people might want to just have a big impact on a couple people. So some people have a really important idea and they feel like if I could just share this even with a handful of people, it would be totally worth it. And then finally, some people want to use this channel, whether it's a YouTube channel or a blog, this channel of communicating with people to sell their products or sell their services. And in that case, you have to think about, you know, where is your audience most likely to be found? Does your audience prefer reading blog articles or would they prefer watching YouTube videos? And is it important that you grow your audience faster? Generally, if you're selling something more expensive, then you just need to attract a few of the right people. Whereas if you're selling something that is less expensive, then you need a very large audience of people who are interested in buying because you need a lot of small transactions. So all that to say, you need to think about what your goals for your platform actually are, why you're interested in starting a blog or starting a YouTube channel, and then think about which of these two platforms is better suited to help you reach those goals. The next two questions that it's important for you to ask yourself is, first of all, how important is it to you for you to grow your audience very quickly? Because if it's really important for one reason or another for you to grow your audience fast, then YouTube is probably the better bet. And then the second thing that goes right along with that is how competitive are you and how willing are you to really put in the hard work? And is there one type of work that appeals more to you? If you're working on building a blog, you're really going to have to dig in to do the collaborations, to write the guest posts, and to get your name out there. Whereas if you're over on YouTube, then instead you're going to have to work on making your videos videos as high quality as possible so that they really stand out from your competition. Either way, you need to be competitive, but it's still something worth thinking about. Okay, and then the final question I would suggest that you ask yourself is how much time do you want to or have available to commit to this project? Because these two different platforms require different amounts of time and also kind of different types of time. Blogging normally takes a little bit more time. Like I said, it normally would take me around five hours to write a blog post and actually get it published on the internet. The type of work that's required for blogging though can be really slow and steady. You can write a few words every day, and by a few words I mean probably a couple hundred, and then later in the week work on doing the different tasks that you need to do to get your blog article published on your website. 
With a YouTube channel, on the other hand, creating each video takes less time generally, unless you're creating something that's really complicated. However, even though it takes less time, normally I would say around two hours per video, you need to do it in kind of bigger spurts, because you have to sit down and actually film the video, and that can take you time to get ready, you know, maybe you want to put on your makeup or do your hair, sit down, film the video start to finish, you can't really break that up into little bits, unless you're doing daily vlog style content. And then once the video is filmed, you have to do all the editing and you have to get it uploaded onto YouTube and those things are normally easier to do in big chunks. So if you have tiny little bits of time all throughout the week but you have plenty of them, blogging could be a better fit. On the other hand, if you just have a couple big chunks, like maybe you just have Saturday available, then a YouTube channel might work better for you. Okay, well I think that that is everything for this video. Sorry that it was kind of a long one, but I hope that this gave you some thoughts to consider as you're trying to decide whether to start a blog or YouTube channel. I would love to hear your thoughts on this issue, both which one do you think you want to start and also if you have more points to add to this conversation, like more pros or more cons about starting a blog or starting a YouTube channel, please post them in the comment section down below so that people have more things to consider. There's probably plenty of pros and plenty of cons that I missed. These were just a few that came to my mind first, but please do post in the comments down below and share any thoughts that you have as well. Okay, well that is everything for this video. Thank you guys so much for being here today. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button down there because I make two videos every single week, every single Tuesday, every single Thursday, and I would love to have you join me for the next one. Of course, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful. I hope you are having an amazing week and I look forward to seeing you again next time.